Hi, welcome to Sell Less, Mean More. I'm Yolanthi Gabri and I'm your host. And today I'm speaking with Elle Steele, who is several things. She is a Paralympian who is a champion. She's one of my very good friends. She's an intuitive healer and she is a consultant to corporates. Now that sounds like a pretty diverse pool of expertise, um, but let me tell you that Elle is all that and more. Today is the first uh, series in podcast, and if you're curious, you can also watch Elle and I speak on our, um, our YouTube, which I'll include in the show notes for today. Um, this particular podcast is going to focus on trimester one of 100 Days of Brave, which focuses on ideation and intuition, and Elle is definitely the right person to speak to about that. So Elle, welcome to Sell Less, Me More. Thank you so much for having me. I love chatting with you about all things business intuition. Yay! So <laughs> I think it's really important um, and part of my focus for writing 100 Days of Brave in the first place to give everybody listening a really good shot in the arm of confidence about the circuitous nature of becoming a successful business owner, which you are. Now, Elle, how long have you been in business? I've been in business for 12 years, um, but there's been varying versions of that for me. Yeah, and that's the thing I would really love everybody listening to understand, that if you're beginning your 100 Days of Brave journey, for any business owner, going through, looking at your offering, developing your brand, launching products, it's not something that you do once in those 12 years, say that Elle's been an entrepreneur. It's something that we actually need to do regularly. Um, so in some ways, that makes us a bit like the phoenix, which I think that Elle is going to speak <laughs> about us about a little bit later in terms of her um, expertise in the intuition space. Um, Elle, how would you say that you approach business development and product design now as opposed to little Elle back 12 years ago? What are some of the things that, you thought would be a value to customers that wasn't and what mm. are the things now that you understand actually are critical to the success of a, of a launch or a business? It's really interesting because that's a great question because I actually started my business as a social enterprise and in the disability space. So I, I was born with a muscle and joint condition. I used a wheelchair to get around and a lot of my first brave moments in going into business was, oh, well, people need to be educated on disability. So I'm, I'm an expert in that because it's lived experience. I can go and talk about that. But what I realized was that that wasn't my true love and that every time I kind of wanted to step into that space, my intuition would be like screaming at me that this, it felt icky. Um, and so over the years and as I've progressed, and listened more to my myself and my the truth of who I am, I have kind of moved away from that space. Every now and then I'll talk about it and I do little snippets of that kind of work, but it's much more about um, listening more and more as I evolve and sharing my voice more and more as I evolve and the different um, learning about the te- learning to be a business owner in market in a sense that's tangible for people to truly understand instead of the esoteric people can kind of experience yeah. the esoteric with me um but i need to what i've learned is i've needed to not dumb it down because i've never dumbed it down but expand my own sense of self and my own ability to communicate what i do so that a, a bright, a, a large audience can actually understand what it is that I can do, and that it, that that it actually can sit within all industries. It's not just in the personal development space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your background is actually a really unusual mesh of two worlds. Would you be able to um, give a little bit of your uh, professional background and what it is that your practice involves now to the audience? Mm, so I um, I actually studied music industry event management um, at university because I wanted to be a band manager. I thought that was like the ultimate dream. Um, but what that course taught me <laughs> was um, what I kind of took, took really away from my degree was the marketing part, the events management part, the PR part. And then I worked for a long time in the sports marketing space for um, 
Olympians and Paralympians and a lot of those types of different events, athletes, speak, speakers, bureaus, and I was also a speaker and I'm a speaker myself. Um, and at the end of my elite swimming career, I had a really bad shoulder injury and went to all these Western medicine doctors and they told me that it was in my head, the pain. So I went to a spiritual healer and this woman helped me tap more into my intuition and more into my true sense of self. Um, and I later then learned how to read cards and become an energy healer and tap more into that kind of space. And I've mushed both of them together. So I work as a business coach or business mentor using all of those skills I learned in my business life, personal development uh, or business development, community development, all that kind of stuff. And then all of the spiritual stuff runs alongside it. So it's like a two tiered approach. Um, and it feels, I mean, when you're an entrepreneur, you can get to create your own job, right? So it's yeah. actually so deeply in line with my personality that I get, I'm excited by it every day. Yeah, that's a pretty nice position to be in. And I think <laughs> it's, it's one that, um, that people who are having a crack at 100 Days of Brave would ultimately like to find themselves in mm. personally. Um, in the first portion of 100 Days of Brave called Trimester One, one of the activities and the core and most important one is about ideation. So ideation is just another word for brainstorming ideas about business concepts that you think would work. And there's a variety of different ways to ideate. Um, now, recently, 100 Days of Brave was reviewed on Steph's Business Book Club. Um, Steph is a awesome book reviewer who focuses on um, on materials that, are, you know, by and large seem to help uh, corporates. And I really loved that when she came to this part of 100 Days of Brave and I talk about things that I use to ideate, which include tarot and angel cards. I have, <laughs> I think, I've got 33 sets or something like that. You have more sets than me. <laughs> Yeah, I know. You've got, you got rid of a lot of yours. I'm not letting go of any of mine. I need one for every mood. <laughs> um, when she got to the bit about the cards and my use of them for ideation, she was like, at that point, I thought I was going to throw 100 days of brave into the bay because I thought that this chick is just like talking about woo-woo and I don't like it. And that response, I completely understand. And yeah. Then, um, I'm so glad that you could read the book and you gave it a five-star review um, despite my woo-woo-ness. Um, so ideation can take uh, the form of, of many different things from doing really structured um, planning with things that look official in business through to, um, you know, having more esoteric experiences. At the end of the day, ideation is all about tuning into our, our inner knowledge. And mm. for some of us, that voice is louder. Mm. And for some of us, we can't hear it at all which doesn't mean it's not there. It's just we haven't worked out <laughs> where the volume is on the AirPods for that voice yet, that's all. Um, and for even though I'm, I, I have incredibly hard business skills in terms of formally building business, mm. I really respect the soft skills I have, which tell me if something is a good decision or a bad decision. Now, sometimes people always tie intuition to this idea of woo-woo, which to the scientific mind is necessarily illegitimate. Mm. I feel that intuition, that little voice, is actually the result of all the knowledge that you have gathered from your physical self, from your experiences in the past, from the books you've read, the music you've listened to, the politics that you engage with. It's all of that coming up with the single light bulb that tells you whether or not something aligns. That's, totally. that's how I interpret intuition. Mm. So it's not like magic, it's just a different way of uh, consolidating the information around us. Now, mm. I'd love to know about the way that, that you came to incorporate the use of intuition in your life, but also how do you explain it to people who might feel like, nah, it's woo-woo, I don't <laughs> want to think about it. If it's not Tim Ferriss and a four-hour working week, that, femi that semi-feely, softy stuff can get in the bin. I want to know more about that. <laughs> um, I'd also side note to Tim Ferriss for our work work week. We went away for a 48 hour trip and remember I was trying to read it and I felt so stressed by it. I was like, no, this is not the vibe yeah. for me. Um, which, you know, That's obviously I like to flow. Yeah. It's your intuition. Um, so yeah. for people who have not, don't really know like the, like the background of intuition, there are four main types. Um, 
there is clairvoyance, which is where you get a movie in your head, clairaudience, where you might hear your inner voice or, you know, for my, in my, um, life, I hear an outer voice because I'm tapped into the cosmic energy of the universe, which is getting a little bit too deep. So I won't go too much into that. <laughs> um, Claire cognizance, which is like this kind of just, you just know stuff and Claire, um, oh my God, Claire, anyway, the Claire where you feel everything. So it's just like, it's like a cath day night. I can feel it in my waters, that kind of vibe. Yes. You just kind of that gut feeling. Um, so when I am tapping into or brainstorming and, and tapping in and building into new programs, I definitely use divination tools like tarot and oracle cards and even crystals um, and the, to give me different messages. But the way that you can, I guess, understand whether your intuition is speaking to you is giving yourself the space to do it firstly. So, you know, setting up in setting up your brainstorming space in a, in a way that makes you feel calm and connected to yourself um, and allowing those moments where potentially your body is actually telling you more than anything. So the strongest um, intuitive or clear um, that I have found in people that are not fully kind of tapped into that area or it's not really a, th a, a thing that they would generally vibe into is actually the sense of feeling so you might walk into a room and you'll get a sense whether that that room feels really good or it doesn't feel good or you um you'll know in your body whether what someone is saying is to be true or isn't to be true it, you you are experiencing the, this intuitive kind of hit in your body all the time and much like what yoli said when when we're kind of growing up, our intuition is formed and based on things like, oh, should I touch that hot cup of tea? Or maybe my gut is telling me maybe it's too hot, I shouldn't do it. So it actually is formed when we're a baby. And essentially people like me have just gone further into the unknown of it and tapped more deeply into it so then we can tap into all the different kind of energetics that are available to us but it can literally be as simple as as does this feel good for me in my tummy mm, no I'm not really sure whether that's like a full body yes um or it might even be that it feels like a yes but not right now and being okay with what the answer actually is you know trusting yourself enough to know that what is coming through physically for you is actually right so so much of intuition come like trust comes intuition so much of it yeah um so when somebody is um thinking about dipping their toe into using intuition for business planning can you clarify how using a tool a divination tool for example my favorites being cards can you explain how using those doesn't mean being a slave to them Oh, yeah. So um, one of my most successful online programs that I ever was one of my first ones too that I ever built was actually based on um, the language that was coming from the cards. So I, I pulled, the, I was like, I, I don't know how to articulate what it is that is in my body and what I'm feeling this program or this course on this online course wanted to wants to be. I can't kind of get the words out. I'm all in my head. So I actually used a beautiful kind of mush between a tarot and an oracle card deck that I have. And I pulled the different cards and I read in the booklet because most of them come with booklets and about the feelings I wanted my clients to experience. And so by going through and um, gathering information about, you know, for example, one of the most prosperous cards in a, in, a, in a tarot deck is the ten of um, the ten of cups or the ten of pentacles. It means you're kind of coming to the end of your money journey. You're growing in your wealth consciousness. I was like, oh, I want people to be able to experience the richness of life. So, what is this deck telling me? What are the words in the booklet? And what is this card making me feel? Um, <laughs> And I used all that kind of information from that deck to help me to learn to articulate what it was that I was actually wanting to share with my clients. And it kind of grounded the course more deeply because it was allowing me to learn the words that were kind of floating around in my, in my brain, but I hadn't really learned to articulate yet. So that was a really powerful experience for me. 
So I really love what you're saying there about the way that you in, interpreted um, the Ten of Pentacles into a theme. Like that theme is so open, like you're holding that idea or that intuition from the, the, the divination tool you're using in a really loose loose way in your hand. Mm. Um, and I think that that's a way that I found using divination tools very useful as well um, because ultimately <clears throat> any tool we use, whether it's 100 Days of Brave or it's Oracle Cards or it's going to a business coach or it's going to um, an esoteric healer, they're not the ones that you're getting the information from. You are getting the information from yourself as to where you want to go. All those services or tools are merely ear horns to yourself. That's all totally. like they are. Totally. So regardless of whether they're packaged as like a really corporate a service, which indeed you have packaged your um, coaching to banks and big corporates as a very corporate way, or whether you're, you know, you're, you're teaching one of your online classes like Rich Witch. Look it up. Yeah. Girl Steals Rich Witch. It looks like an incredible course. Um, <laughs> it's all just about us being able to connect to ourselves. And, and as I said, that goes for 100 days of Brave as well. Mm. So um, and quickly on that, y'all. When it, yeah. When when we were at when I was at your book launch, I I grabbed your book and I said, "Tell me what it is that I need to know right now." So I used your book as a divination tool, and it fell onto the intuition page. So I just want to mention that that this book, yeah, and and for background story, I was having a bit of a moment about 40, 48 hours before Yoli's book launch as a business, as you will, and as you grow your to be an entrepreneur, but you know, I, I trusted in what the book had for me in that moment. And I fell on the intuition page and it was so much about just Elle, rely back on what you know is true for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's also ways that just moving from um, the use of intuition. So some of you might, might be going, Galanthi L, it's all very well to say, get a, get a check and get a pack of um, tarot cards and, and get a copy of a book and then, like, you know, just, you know, allow the universe to um, to to provide me with the kind of business that I should run. Um, now I'd really like to go into, so you've got the information from whatever tool you're using, 100 Days Brave, uh, business coach, whatever it is, and you're thinking this particular business of um, selling, I don't know, it could be something like an e-commerce, a real-world product, like a cup, or it could be like a massage service or a bakery or a piece of software as a service. How do you then, what, what are a couple of ways you can test your intuition for veracity? Because that's so important as well. Oh, yes. So um, I like to, I a lot, so much of my stuff is so embody, about embodiment. When I've got an idea and it's kind of swimming around my head and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that would be a really good idea, I'm thinking about it, I like to visualise my idea actually in a balloon in my head and I like to pull it down into my stomach and imagine whether um, the, the – imagine that the balloon is in my stomach and then ask my gut if it feels good. If yeah. if you're not kind of able to do that, if that's like, you know, not really a vibe for you, go and ask your go and ask your friends, not the ones that want you to stay the same, the ones that's that you feel as if you can um ask those true questions to, those questions where they'll really give you the honest answers. So for example, Yolanthi is that kind of person for me. So I will go to Yol and be like, what do you think of this? Because I know that I will get exactly well, she'll ask me questions and then I can take her word for it or I can allow myself to feel what it feels like when she's saying things back to me. So um I'm giving I'm kind of allowing someone external to me to feed back the information to me and tell me whether it feels good or bad in my body as well. So, you know, one of the best advice I ever got from another entrepreneur was don't get it. Don't ask for advice from people who don't know what you're doing. Yes. Because they just, <laughs> they froth on telling you just to get a nine to five job. But if it's not your vibe, I mean, also if nine, nine to five job is your vibe, like yay, yay for you. But if it's not, and this is, you know, really what you're feeling is something that you really want to have in your life and be like this entrepreneur, then hang out with people that you know will, will um, assist you in making that dream come true and in an honest, loving way. Yeah, I think that listening to the voices that are happy to see you change because becoming a business owner, even if you're 
trying out the business as a weekend concept. It involves a shift of identity because mm. you go from, oh, hey, I'm Jessica and I work five days a week um, uh, in accounts for an estate agent, but on the weekend I do expert nannying for kids who are neurologically divergent, right? Mm. So that's, that's, you know, then you're going, okay, so this is Jessica during the week, but I'm going to start talking about my other passion, which is, um, which is you know, educational, um, having a focus on, on childcare for the neurologically diverse. Um, it involves a shift in identity. And I can tell you that when you make a decision to become a business owner, there are definitely, um, there are definitely some people who feel really challenged by that mm. because it brings up a lot of insecurities in them about hey, perhaps what they would like to do. Um, and they, um, it's not because they're wishing you ill or anything like that, but it's yeah. a challenge to their own identity. And sometimes friendships, you know, they fall by the way. Um, and that's also why I would never encourage, and I make this really clear in 100 Days of Brave, I'd never encourage you, for example, if you're getting a logo for your new business or you've got a business name, I would never encourage you to go to LinkedIn and then post the drafts of logos or the drafts of business names and ask random people who don't know about you or care about you what you should choose. That is not accurate market testing. That yeah. is vomiting into the abyss and it doesn't yes. help you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I- I'm, I'm more- a more helpful way of testing your intuition, like once you've got a concept for a business name or a logo, is to go to a safer to a, a safer space, which could be a, a mastermind group that you've involved yourself in. It can just be other people in the same place as you. So we have a uh, hundred days of brave private Facebook group. The other people in that space are also involved in the same process as you, right? So comparatively, it's a much safer space. It's going to be more collaborative, and it won't be like. They're probably they're not going to be bullshitting you either, like, mm. um, because they're they're going through that same that same process. You don't you don't want to get information from people who are like your granny or your mum because they're probably going to agree with you because they want you to succeed. Which is why using things like SurveyMonkey or other tools to work out if your product or service <laughs> is actually um, if there's actually a market is is so important. I've done um, startup grind weekends where, you know, a startup grind, I, I talk about it in the book, but it's effectively a weekend where you go into a big co-working space with another two or three people. There's usually a marketer, there's a geek, and there's a graphic designer, and you create a product or a, mm. a, or a minimum viable product in the space of three days. It's super fun. Um, but a lot of the time, whether or not the project works is based on how much research they've done about whether or not the product is actually needed. So that's that's worth bearing in mind. And that, that connects directly to um, to intuition as well. Mm. Um, I, would, I would say that having those people in your life, as Elle said, that you can check in with as a business owner or even somebody attempting, like you might not have, you might not be feeling like you're a business owner yet, mm. but you're getting there. Um, and you, you want to be able to speak to somebody who, is able to look at what you're expressing with a you know with a bit of analysis, and I think that's maybe why um, in L and I like in our relationship we're able to really look at each other from a really loving, caring perspective as people who are involved in the hard like in the cold face of commerce. So, mm. for example, like about I don't know, might have been a couple of months ago, Elle was feeling she was just predominantly tired, right? <laughs> um, did you want to share that? Yeah, yeah. So I messaged our friends, our kind of entrepreneur friends messenger group. And the gist of the message was, um, I'd had one of my biggest months ever. And then it had gone, it had just kind of, you know, pancaked on itself. And I was feeling like, I, and my gist, my gist was, I don't know even what I do anymore. Um, and so we, you know, we had, it was, we had some beautiful messages back and forth. One of our um, close friends, Beth, she sent me an astrology um, link and, you know, that was such a Bethy thing to do. I loved it so much. And then Yoli FaceTimed me and I basically just sobbed the whole time on the FaceTime. Um, and it was this beautiful remembering or reminding that I was just really tired and I just needed to step back for a bit and that, 
I knew exactly what I was doing, but in the face of exhaustion and the face of continually trying to push and push and push, that there was no way that I was going to be able to create anything new or um, even probably feel into my intuition because I actually just needed to do nothing for a bit. Um, and yeah. it was it was like a permission slip to just set myself free of tr not trying to, um, you know, hustle culture is dead anyway, but it's you don't act, you don't have to be that way. The more that you can trust in the ebbs and flows of your energy and remember that, you know, flowers don't bloom all year round, that kind of stuff. It was such a beautiful um, conversation to have. I was, you know, I messaged the group and I was like, oh yeah, I, I know that these women are going to be able to really help me because they know who I am. We've been friends for so long and I don't need to be anyone for them in this moment. I can actually just ask for for support through this. It was, it was beautiful. And likewise, um, you know, uh, this last quarter I've been beset by like a number of um, illnesses and after a few months of ill health, you know, your perspective on your own strength can really get in the bin really Really mm -hmm. easily, um, and I had a really similar conversation with Elle, and she reminded me that I just needed to maybe I did need another week off, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I did need to rest a bit more, and that is literally what I needed to do. We, um, uh, I took a decision with Ruby Assembly to have three weeks working from home because of the amount of illness that was impacting it on um, Melbourne, where we're based in Australia, um, and, um, and that has made the world of difference and I feel back on my feet. So there's a lot of knowledge quite close to home mm. that you will know, your intuition will tell you who is somebody that is good to share your ideation with um, and to share your moments of vulnerability with. Mm. Um, Elle, thank you so much for um, sharing different ways of, thinking about ideation so that we don't we don't freak out about using woo-woo tools because they're really just an extension of all the other knowledge we've already earned. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they just, you know, might give you a beautiful visual representation of what you already know. Um, so I am going to include links to um, the variety of L's um, assets in today's show notes um, and we're going to actually be continuing this series on 100 Days of Brave's first trimester, which involves ideation, with another really interesting business person um, who is also in the slightly esoteric space. Her name is Vix, and some of you might follow her on Instagram. So her podcast will be coming up in a month or so. Um, Elle, thank you so much for coming on Sell Less, Be More. I hope everybody's enjoyed our conversation today, and I look forward to checking in with you, Elle, soon, and with all of our listeners again in the coming months. Bye. Thank you. Bye.